A colleague asked when they could return after leaving the future. I hope we'll have opportunities to work together again in the future. Indeed, our company made some adjustments last year due to various reasons. We also made some changes. I especially hope for capable people who are willing to join us on our future journey. This year, I recently participated in our Sparks program. You also recruited some Sparks today, right? Yes, we did. Sparks are our fresh graduates. I just attended the first phase of training for our fresh graduates two days ago. This year, we've recruited over 1,400 fresh graduates for the future. More than 1,400 have joined this year. For 2025, we're recruiting on college campuses globally. We have 2,000 positions available. We have 2,000 positions available. All right, so if you're young students willing to dive into the intelligent electric vehicle industry, we welcome you to submit your resumes to us. Despite how difficult last year was, we didn't cancel or revoke any offers we made to college students. The offers or the acceptance notifications we sent out, we didn't cancel a single one, I think, for young people, if you've already made them a promise. And then you cancel it. It's extremely difficult for them. So our campus recruitment for 2025 starts on the 25th. It's already starting on the 25th of July, 25th. So everyone is welcome to submit their resumes to us. Let me briefly talk about the chip. Today, we announced to the world the first five nanometers automotive grade, high performance self-driving chip, the future Shenji 9031. We've successfully completed the tape out. I'm actually quite excited about this. We customized this chip ourselves for self-driving scenarios, defining it based on our own algorithms. This approach has really proven to be the right one. But today, we're just giving you a sneak peek at our self-developed ISP to showcase a bit of what this chip can do. The performance of this chip in terms of GPU and CPU capabilities across many aspects is something we'll discuss with you in more detail later. I want to emphasize that this is the world's first automotive grade five nanometers, high performance self-driving chip. To briefly summarize, today we're announcing to everyone the world's first, and I mean first, five nanometers automotive grade, high performance self-driving chip. The future Shenji 9031 has successfully completed tape out. Aha. Today we've defined this chip ourselves for self-driving scenarios, basing it on our own algorithms. This approach has truly proven to be the right one. But today we're just giving you a glimpse of our self-developed ISP to demonstrate a bit of what this chip can do, the performance of this chip in terms of GPU and CPU capabilities across many aspects. We'll discuss more about this with you in the future. I want to reiterate that this is the world's first automotive grade five nanometers high performance self-driving chip. I think everyone has a bit of a misunderstanding about the future. For instance, when we talk about the future, people immediately think of battery swapping. As soon as battery swapping is mentioned, everyone forgets that we're actually focused on charging. We're the most proactive and hardworking company in this field. We've installed over 20,000 charging stations. There are places that people don't visit often, like Mohe Jufeng, the Duku Highway. We're setting up charging stations in many of these locations. It seems like everyone has selectively ignored this fact. Throughout our entire system, whether it's our Nomi or the future AI avatar we'll enjoy, there's actually a whole set of technology behind it that we call Nomi GPT and the entire large model technical architecture. So let's break this down into several parts. At the forefront, of course, is what we call the interaction component. The interaction includes voice as well as text and images. Recently, we've also launched the latest dynamic window for page turning. Now with the large language models, there's actually a lot more interactive information compared to the previous single channel, single mode voice interaction. The amount of information has increased significantly. That's right, many times there are even pictures and videos. So now we need better ways to handle this AI human interaction information. Exactly. All of these are actually the technologies we're supporting behind the scenes. Of course, in addition to this, we also have cognitive intelligence in the background. This includes the most basic account management recognition and memory. There's also a very important point which is as AI develops increasingly powerful reasoning and knowledge capabilities, it also needs to comply with laws and regulations. It also needs to respect user privacy and security. So in this aspect, we're also doing a tremendous amount of work for the future. Now let's talk about the cumulative number of patents we've applied for. 
it's actually ranked first among startup companies. We're talking about more than 9,000 patents. Last year, we had this near-in event. It was the first time we organized it. At that time, we released 12 full-stack technologies. This was all for a smart electric vehicle company. It's about developing 12 fundamental core technologies. So how should we approach this layout? This is what Xiaoxin was talking about at the time. We discussed the value of intelligent driving in the future, or rather, the value we want to create for users. It's about reducing accidents and freeing up mental energy. When it comes to reducing accidents, our performance has been exceptionally good. The safety of our intelligent driving system when compared to manual driving is significantly better based on our own data. It's already about six times safer than when a vehicle is driven manually. Our goal is to make it 10 times safer by the end of next year, and we believe there's a great chance we can achieve this target. Do you think our current intelligent driving capability ranks among the top globally? It must be in the first tier. Our pilot assistance mileage has actually exceeded 110 billion kilometers today. We're looking at the actual figure of 110 billion kilometers. On average, that's about 50 kilometers per hour. For us, it's equivalent to helping users drive for about 200 million hours. Yes, that's still a lot. This is about end-to-end -end technology. Now everyone talks about how great end-to-end -end is. Why don't you explain end-to-end -to, -end to everyone? Then explain why we first apply our end-to-end -to -end technology to improving the main safety capabilities. End-to-end -end is a very meaningful concept. Many people talk about end-to-end. -end. Then they ask, are you at the end? Yes, are you at the end? Are you high end or low end? Then colleagues joke, is it from your end to my end? Or from which end to which end? From serving water to serving food, right? This logic makes sense, right? Also, people in the industry ask, what kind of end-to-end -end have you implemented? What kind of end-to-end? -end? So this is still a, what should end-to-end -end be used for? So let's explain this to everyone. Mm -hmm. So why do we talk about end-to-end? -end? Naturally, it's because before it wasn't end-to-end. -end. Now everyone emphasizes end-to-end, -end, right? So what did it mean before it wasn't end-to-end? -end? Well, we actually talk about driving as automatic driving. It's essentially from sensor input to the final actuator doing the work. The actuator automatically helps you turn the steering wheel, right? The actuator controls stepping on the pedal, opening the door, and then the bicycle, right? So this is actually one end to another end, right? One end is the sensor, the other end is the actuator. So now, what about end-to-end? -end? It aims to use a single model to solve everything. Why wasn't it called end-to-end -end before? Now it's segmented because it was segmented. After segmentation, what happens? It becomes more complete. Perception to execution is now complete. But indeed, when the previous technology wasn't mature, this was more difficult to handle. Now, with large models and other new technologies emerging, it will indeed be able to handle this matter. Our future is different from other typical companies. All of our first generation cars use a single intelligent system. That's right. We use tree names to name it. For the first generation, we call it Asman or White Poplar. For the second generation, we call it Banyang or Glory Tree. So you can understand that later versions starting with C will be various types of trees. Now I'll give you a little spoiler about Ladao. It will use you. I'll give another spoiler. Leodo will use fruit names. Why do we use plant names? Because we believe each type of tree should grow and thrive on its own. It's because cars are different from other things. Cars are used for more than a decade. Even if you're using a second-hand, third-hand or fourth-hand car. So you need to continuously update its software. If you don't update it, there might be security issues in the future. There could be all sorts of problems. If you don't maintain it, it definitely won't work. 